Hey all, and welcome to a new series, building a modular model railroad. Over the coming months, I'll be working on filming videos showcasing a model railroad built from scratch, start to finish. There will be a large focus on scenery when we eventually get to that stage. However, at the moment, the railroad is in its infancy with only the basic benchwork and a small amount of track laid. This video makes up part three of the series. Part one and two are articles on my website. Part 1 is research and planning, and part 2 is track planning. In part 3 I'll show you the benchwork. Basically it's designed to be modular, so that it can be dismantled later, or even expanded upon. The basic structure is open grid rectangular sections, built to slot together with two end return sections that will allow for a 19 inch radius. 19 inches is quite a tight radius for HO scale, however I'm planning to hide most of the return loop track behind scenery. Just be sure to consider what type of rolling stock and locomotives you plan to use because some of them won't be able to navigate such tight turns without some sort of modification. I won't step you through the construction of the open grid sections, there are many ways to build a grid, however for those interested in the dimensions and size of the sections, here they are. The main grid is made using 19 by 89 mm dressed pine. The total length varies between the sections as shown. However, the width is the same at 600 millimeters. It's up to you what dimensions you want to use, but just be sure to consider the size of your available space, as well as the distance needed to reach over the layout. Having deep layouts while it looks cool, it might be a stretch to reach across the scenery and details to uncouple a car or even fix a derailment. Each module is self-contained with an overhanging section. Each overhang is also 600 millimeters wide and has been designed to hold the lighting and the backdrop. Legs are made using 12mm plywood, cut into strips and screwed together. Each leg set is 1200mm tall, 520mm wide and 750mm long. Having the legs 1200mm tall will set the rail height to approximately 1395mm or about 55 inches above the floor when taking into account the leg feet baseboard and the cork roadbed. Now that you've seen the basic construction of the modules and leg assemblies, I'll take you through in more detail adding adjustable feet, alignment dowels, and the sub road bed right up to the stage where we can start laying track. For the feet, I'm using Richmond 50mm M8 steel fixed leveling feet, along with a 19mm M8 thread insert. They are relatively easy to install. A 19mm spay bit is used to bore a hole. The threaded insert is then pressed into the hole. It's quite a tight fit so a hammer might be needed. Having adjustable feet on the bottom of each leg allows me to adjust the height specifically on each leg which is important especially for modular layouts that move around and for floors that are uneven. I also added a felt pad to the base of each foot so the module can slide a bit easier on the cement floor which really helps when connecting the modules together. Now to attach the top. I use 25mm angle brackets. This is so the legs can be separated from the top when needed. Again it's a straightforward process, I just make sure to accurately centre the legs onto the bottom of the top section. It doesn't have to be perfect, but by being more accurate means the module will be better balanced. Once happy the legs are clamped down so they won't move. Then the bracket is placed and the holes marked ready for drilling. Both sides are pre-drilled to prevent wood splitting. Although these screws are quite small, I probably could have gotten away without it, but it doesn't hurt. Altogether there are 6 angle brackets holding each top section to the leg assembly. Now for aligning the modules. DCC Concepts make alignment dowels, which are designed for this exact purpose. I tried using some cheap alignment dowels from eBay, However, as you can see here, there is a small amount of play between the parts, which will be a big problem for maintaining good track alignment. However, the DCC concept dowels have absolutely no play, which is perfect. I also created a jig to get a perfectly horizontal hole with relation to the modules. This is important so the dowels line up straight with each other. I also found using a 13mm standard drill bit along with a 19mm Forstner bit worked best and believe me I tried all the various drill bits and methods and found this one worked the best. The modules to be joined are pushed together. Once perfectly level with each other they are clamped. 
Getting the modules aligned perfectly now will help with all the later steps and getting the track to line up perfectly. It doesn't really matter where the holes are drilled for the dowels, but for aesthetic reasons I like to make them evenly spaced and at the same height. The block at the back that I'm taping on gives a cleaner hole as the drill exits the back of the module. I'm a bit limited with space here, so the jig is pre-inserted over the 13mm drill bit. Also, I don't have three hands, so I had to use some tape to help hold the jig while I clamped it tight against the inside of the module. You can see that with a little effort, once the jig is firmly clamped, it helps me drill perfectly horizontal holes. If I were to do this freehand, I can almost guarantee you it would have been crooked. Now we just need to countersink each hole just enough to fit the head of each alignment dowel. Again, I'm using a guide I created in some wood to help me line up the bit. I also drew a black line on the bit as a depth gauge, so that I don't drill too far into the wood. A quick test shows that it fits perfectly. Installing each dowel is achieved with a liberal amount of wood glue around each dowel filling in the grooves. Next the dowel is pressed down into the hole. Any excess wood glue that oozes out is wiped away. The same is done on the other side with the second half of the dowel. While the glue is still wet, I press the two modules together and clamp them as the glue around each dowel hardens. This just ensures they are definitely setting in the correct position. I also make sure to mark each module so that I know what order they go back together in which isn't a problem when they have track and scenery, but in their bare form as they are now, it can be easy to mix them up. To hold the modules together, some bolts and wing nuts are used. It's a pretty basic setup, but once they are on and screwed tightly together, it provides a good strong hold and the modules won't be coming apart anytime soon. I also added the same bolt and wing nut to the top of each overhang as well. Now onto the sub road bed. But first I wanted to test an 18 inch radius curve just to see how my largest rolling stock would cope. And it seemed to cope okay. It doesn't look pretty, but with the space constraints I had, it will get me by. The sub road bed is 12mm plywood, the same stuff I used for the legs. The track plan I created, which you can see on my website, was printed on A4 paper, sticky taped together like a jigsaw, laid out over the modules, and taped down. To transfer the design onto the plywood, I poke small holes along the centerline of the tracks. Then, with a heavy marker, I pressed it on each of those small holes, leaving a small dot behind on the plywood. Once the plan was removed, I could join all those lines together like a dot to dot. Using the actual turnouts helps get everything aligned. I used a block as a guide to mark out where to cut the plywood. The plywood is only needed on areas directly below sections of track. The rest will be filled in later with foam board, giving me a bit more flexibility with terrain and to help limit the weight of the layout. With everything marked, I can start cutting. Unfortunately, this method results in a bit of waste material. However, I make sure to keep and recycle the plywood wherever I can. Small scraps of plywood can be very handy at times. Because the runaround loop is going to be lower, I need to raise the rest of the plywood appropriately, which is why everything is positioned and then marked. I need to create small wooden spaces to go underneath to raise the plywood. I've conveniently raised the plywood to exactly the height of two sheets of foam, which will make adding the foam much easier down the track. Craig screws are used to mount the spaces. I use Craig screws a lot during the construction of each module. It helps keep the screws hidden and out of the way and makes everything look overall neater. Once the spaces are installed, we can attach the sub road bed. This is simple enough, wood glue is spread across each spacer. The sub road bed sections are placed on top, paying careful attention to lining up the edges with the adjoining module. Once happy, it's clamped tightly so that it doesn't move and then holes are pre-drilled for the screws. I also make sure to countersink each of the screws because we want the top surface to be nice and flat. This is the surface we will be sitting the track on top of, so we don't want any lumps or bumps. That completes the basic module benchwork. In the next video I'll be laying track, making sure it aligns, 
adding the wiring, switch motors, as well as testing our first train on the layout, which is where the real fun starts to happen. I hope you enjoyed today's video and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode in the series. Cheers and thanks for watching.